Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on the end of chapter 6 called chemical equilibrium. Now chemical equilibrium is the state in which both reactants and products are present in concentrations which have no further tendency to change with time. So essentially, that's when a reaction has stopped. You have your reactant A and reactant B, they react together to form react, uh, product C and product D. Eventually, A and B will all react to the point where we have nothing but C and D. So when that happens, um, we usually say the reaction has stopped. Up until now, that's how our classes worked. You know, all our reactants form products. But in real life, when we have nothing but C and D left in that container here, these can actually collide together and reform A and B. So A and B form C and D, and then C and D can sometimes hit one another and reform A and B. When the rate of my forward process, meaning go A, B, going to C, D, and the rate of C, D going back to A, B, when the rate of those things are the same, we are in what we call chemical equilibrium when you go back and forth between reactants and products. Now, chemical equilibrium describes a process called Le Chatelier's Principle. Now, Le Chatelier's Principle is also called the Equilibrium Law, and this principle can be used to predict the effects of a change in conditions on a system at equilibrium. The system will shift its equilibrium position as to counter the effect of the change. So sorry for the typo here. Now these conditions that we're talking about are concentration, pressure, and temperature. So if you have a reaction that's in equilibrium, meaning we go down to this here, A and B are becoming C and D, and C and D are becoming A and B. When that's happening, you reach equilibrium. Now what you can do is change a few things, like concentration, pressure, or temperature, to manipulate this relationship and get more product out of it. That's usually what people do. So gentlemen, please watch the following animations to get a better grasp on the Chatelier's principle and how it works. In this lesson, you will learn about the Chatelier's principle which explains what a system at equilibrium does in response to stresses. Let's return to our original example of you digging a hole and your friend refilling it simultaneously. If you start digging at a rate faster than refilling, the hole gets larger. In order to maintain a constant size of the hole, your friend must work harder to fill it faster. Following on the same idea, when a chemical system at equilibrium is stressed, the system works to restore equilibrium. This is Le Chatelier's principle. The stresses are changes to the concentration of either the reactants or products, changes to the pressure, although this is only applicable to gaseous systems, changes to the temperature. Let's examine a hypothetical reversible reaction at equilibrium where reactant A reacts with reactant B to form product C and product D. If we added more A and B, the system becomes stressed and is no longer at equilibrium. To counteract the stress, the system forms more C and D in order to remove the excess A and B. The equilibrium, therefore, shifts to the right. If we added more C and D, the system becomes stressed and is also no longer at equilibrium. So to counteract the stress, the system forms more A and B. Therefore, the equilibrium shifts to the left. What happens if we remove C and D as they are being produced, or if the concentration of C and D is decreased. Please pause the lesson to think about this and resume when you are done. The system is now stressed 
and no longer at equilibrium. To counteract the stress, more C and D are produced, so equilibrium shifts to the right. When concentration increases, equilibrium shifts to the opposite side of the reaction. When concentration decreases, equilibrium shifts to the same side of the reaction. Changes in pressure. The stress to a system at equilibrium is only applicable to gaseous systems. For this stress, we will examine another hypothetical reaction at equilibrium, where reactant A reacts with two moles of reactant B to form product C and product D. An increase in pressure means that there is a decrease in volume, so there is less space. Equilibrium will shift to the side of the reaction with fewer moles. In our example, an increase in pressure will cause equilibrium to shift to the right, since there are fewer moles. Two moles compared to three moles on the left. A decrease in pressure means that there is an increase in volume, so there is more space. Equilibrium shifts to the side with more moles, so in our example, equilibrium shifts to the left. So an increase in pressure favors the side with fewer moles, and a decrease in pressure favors the side with more moles. In our next lesson, you will learn about how a system works to restore equilibrium in response to changes in temperature. In summary, Le Chatelier's principle states that when a system at equilibrium is stressed, the system works to restore equilibrium. In this lesson, you will learn about how a system at equilibrium responds to changes in temperature. Le Chatelier's principle states that a chemical system at equilibrium always works to restore equilibrium when it is stressed. To consider what happens to a system at equilibrium when temperature is changed, you must first consider the energetics of the reaction in question. If the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction must be endothermic. Let's examine this hypothetical reaction where reactant A reacts with reactant B to produce product C and product D. With a change in heat of minus 75 kilojoules. This means that when the forward reaction occurs, 75 kilojoules of energy is released and 75 kilojoules is absorbed when the reverse reaction occurs. So an increase in temperature would mean that the endothermic reaction would be favored to remove the excess heat therefore counteracting the imposed stress. Decreasing the temperature would cause the system to produce more energy, therefore the exothermic reaction would be favored. The dimerization of nitrogen dioxide to high nitrogen tetroxide is an exothermic reaction. Nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas, whereas dinitrogen tetroxide is colorless. What observations do you think can be made when the temperature is decreased? How about when the temperature is increased? Please pause the lesson to think about this and resume once you are done. A decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction, so more dinitrogen tetroxide is produced. Since it is a colorless gas, the mixture should appear paler. An increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction, so more nitrogen dioxide is produced. The mixture should therefore appear darker brown. Addition of a catalyst does not affect the position of equilibrium as it increases the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions. It only quickens the attainment of equilibrium. Let's return to the example of you digging a hole and your friend refilling it while you dig. Imagine that you are both given much larger shovels. The size of the hole still remains constant, but with each dig or fill, more soil is removed or filled. 
In conclusion, when the temperature of a system at equilibrium is increased, the endothermic reaction is favored. When the temperature of a system at equilibrium is decreased, the exothermic reaction is favored. Adding a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium.